After having previously shown that works of the law are works of the flesh in this dispensation, Paul then instructed the Galatian believers and us to walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5 verse 16 This was a very important instruction as the Galatian believers were seeking to live under the law, likely as instructed by those of the circumcision. But Paul instead showed that if a believer is led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Galatians 5 verse 18 Example The believer does not have to surrender to works of the flesh a law as the Spirit reveals such deals, exposing such for what they are. With this understood, Paul now points out the works of the flesh, which are dealt with, for all to see. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 5 verses 19 to 21. Let's dig in to get what Paul is here instructing. Paul begins by stating, Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Webster's 1828 dictionary defines manifest as plain, open, clearly visible to the eye or obvious to the understanding, apparent, not obscure or difficult to be seen or understood. Of course, the answer for the believer being able to clearly identify the manifest flesh works is found by the Walk in the Spirit, Galatians 5.16 am, remembering what we learned in Galatians 5 verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other. Dealing with the individual works of the flesh, as listed here, is not the scope of today's study. As each of us gets an all too clear mental picture from just reading this listing, and such like. In other words, it is not a complete list as humans are very inventive in this regard. Instead, it is key that we recognize that these works are such as are not consistent with our new identity in Christ. And the work of Holy Spirit in the believer is to point this out, reminding us that we are forgiven, righteous, holy, and complete and thus works of the flesh do not correspond with our identity in Christ. Being in Christ, and thereby the new creation, the body of Christ, we know, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And thus as mature son heirs our confident expectation is that such works will not be the fruit produced in our lives. And our confident expectation really matters. Further, We are to have a confident expectation that Holy Spirit will identify these flesh work temptations and with the temptation identified. We can no less expect that there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 Holy Spirit within the believer will identify the flesh work temptation and also the manner in which the believer may avoid same. And with the believer being in Christ, the body of Christ, and thereby his, we will further learn from Galatians 5 verse 24 that they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Note the past tense of Galatians 5 verse 24. Example have crucified it's identified as a past tense done deal. Thus, believers should have a confident expectation of the Spirit's work in our lives, identifying in advance the temptation to fulfill works of the flesh and the arrested belief in rightly divided truth of God's word, pointing us to the truth that renders the flesh with its affections the lusts as crucified. Believer, as Spirit-sealed to indwelt members of the body of Christ, We can and should have a very confident expectation of what the Spirit will produce in our lives, namely, crucifixion of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit via walking in the Spirit.